What's up, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Thought Provoking Podcast. I am your host Will Brown, the voice of the people, and I got a special guest in the building. Want to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Antonio De La Cruz. Um, y'all may know me as one of the hottest people in Northwest Indiana. I'm a hairstylist, so yeah, the check me out. Antonio, hairstylist. Yeah. We yeah. got a good one for y'all today. It is the Face Off one-on-one, gay versus straight. Stigmas yeah. around gay versus straight. Before we get off into this, though, I want to ask you, I always mix it up for everybody. What's the one thing that gets on your nerves about social media? People putting their post- personal business out there. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, posting stuff like just dumb, like a, a big summary, a big paragraph, like three paragraphs about their life. Like people care. Like a lot of times I feel like nobody really cares. Like, and then it's like you should keep that to yourself anyway. Do you think it's more for attention? Oh, definitely. Attention. A lot of attention. Because they're probably not getting it from where they at. I don't know. I could agree with that. It's a lot of that going on. Because when I see you, I'd be like, what you doing all that for? Like, I'd be wanting to inbox people and be like, please delete that post. Like, mm-hmm. Just like um, recently somebody reached out to me and um, sent me a bunch of disturbing pictures. And I'm like, then they posted it on the actual page. And I just felt like, yeah, why I you got everybody in your business? And it's like domestic violence and people getting, you know, like, man, no. I definitely, if I was going through a, a situation like that, I would definitely not post that. Or even just anything just personal, my personal life, period. I, don't, I feel like social media is a platform for you to just have fun on. It's not something for you to, if you don't have no business, then don't do it. But if it's something to have fun on, just have fun on it. Yeah. What do you think? I would say the one that's getting on my nerves now is the whole... Fuck everybody. Um, I can I can do shit on my own. Can't depend <laughs> on nobody. It just instantly screams out to me. You broke. You asked somebody for money. They turned you down or didn't come through when you felt they should have. And now you mad at the world. Like, don't hold nobody else to a standard that they have to do something for you. Because you could have kept that. You could have hit that person privately. Like, right. was that a post that needed to be said up there? Like, fuck everybody, and, you know, I'm going to just stay solo. Don't nobody hit me up. Well, you had I, to post I, all that? I'm going to definitely see all of that, too. It's bullshit. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's, it's and then they'll be right in your face, like, hey, how you doing? What's Man. up? Well, how you been? I'm going to tell you the other one that, that kills me. People love to post how... They don't fuck with nobody. This is why I don't fuck with nobody. But then you look through they, they photos, you got a whole lot of motherfuckers that you okay. fuck with, obviously. Like, okay. Man. So that's the one that gets me. I um, deal with a lot of women. I feel like I see a lot of things. And even even like with certain people I deal with that post it on social media and be like, okay, I'm cool with you. Like, why you why you doing me like that? I didn't do you. I didn't do you no type of way. You on there losing your mind on social media just to make yourself look good and you, you look stupid. So you are a hairstylist and yeah. a popular one at that. Let me ask you a question. On a scale of one to ten, when it comes to your business, where are you at mentally and business wise? <clears throat> where would you rate yourself on a scale of one to ten? Well, my business wise, I feel like that. It's a tricky question to me because I could be at a scale with my business. I feel like it's at a seven. It could be at a ten. Okay. It, but the only reason why I'm not going to say it's at a ten is because I'm still putting things together for me right now. And it's when I get to that point, then I'll be like, yeah, I'm at a ten. I'm popping. You know, mm-hmm. I might be popping in a lot of people's eyes, but you know, I just got to remain humble and just just keep it going. So I want to stay at a seven. Uh, mentally wise, with just everything in life, period, I just feel like I'm I'm definitely at an eight. You know, I'm very strong minded, um, well put together. So it's just you know we we all go through things in life every day. So you know, just me being who I am, it just made me a strong person. You know, in order to be who you are in society, you gotta be real strong, especially being somebody like me. You know, um, yeah. So I I, I would say an eight. What would you? What, what do you mean by somebody like me? Um, being a gay, a Latin gay man. You, you gay? Know? Yes. Oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! Let's <laughs> <laughs> go fuck people here up. Okay. Like I didn't know that. <laughs> right, right. You know, but you know, yeah, definitely. Like 
it, it's hard for people to be who they are nowadays because you get criticized, you get talked about, you know, people growing up not knowing about gay people, you know what I'm saying? People think because you're gay, you're you going to like me because, oh, I like you, or you're a straight man, and you think because I come and sit next to you, I want you. No, I don't. not every gay man wants a straight man. Not every gay man wants every man. Everybody got a preference just like men have a preference to women. Everybody got their own, you know, what they like, you know? You know, and being gay, I feel like people, it's so many different gay people. Yeah. It's so many, it's masculine gay men, it's feminine gay men, it's regular. I, I'm not going to say regular, but it's some people that are just look masculine and they feminine as hell, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. yeah, it it's a lot to that, but. Okay. I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, I would rate myself mentally at a strong 8, feeling good right now. I would say when it comes to business, I float between now, 6, 7, sometime 8. I have to let the process just play out the way it's supposed to. Sometimes I post videos and I'll be thinking, oh, this one going viral. Like yeah. everybody going to rock with it. And then I'll yeah. be looking like, damn, it ain't climbing yet. And then over time, it starts to grow. People tap back in and check out my old content and get updated on the new stuff. So I got to be patient. So yeah. I've identified what the problem is when it comes to that. Um, but overall, I'm in a good space. I mean, no real issues going on. Like, Nothing. You're right. So I'm sure this is going to be a shock to people because not that I've had this conversation with anybody, right. but you are the first person that has come on that's gay. Yeah. And I'm sure people would feel like, oh, shit, like what what that's going to be like, you yes. know, would you even have somebody gay on your show? Right. Because I'm open to it. So if you gay, I ain't saying, you know, everybody come. But if you got some good shit to talk about, mm -hmm. I welcome some everybody. Okay. Um, Go ahead. I like and that I appreciate that because a lot of people judge people on um, being gay and who they yeah. are. You know, you being a heterosexual man and you you over there, it's like people don't look at that like, uh, let me put him a part of my business or let mm -hmm. me see what he got to say about this or let's get a point of view from him because people really don't give a fuck. No, no they don't. They don't. don't. So that's the beauty of the podcast. I tell people. Um yeah. When you come on this platform, you never know what you're going to get. You may say something that enlightens somebody and, you know, change their they perspective. Mm -hmm. I may say something that changes your perspective in general. And, you know, at the end of the day, we all got room to where we can learn and grow with each other. I don't think nobody just know all the answers or any of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'm always open to conversation because at the end of the day, that's all it is. Conversation, yes. you know. So I appreciate you being open to coming on the platform, expressing what you're going to express, mm -hmm. and, you know, And I appreciate you numbers. for having me. We, it took us a long time to get yeah, right yeah, here. We, so, we, yeah. We've been going back and forth for a hot <laughs> second, so, but it's been in the works, but I appreciate you coming through. Yes. So let's get off into it. Um, obviously, I'm a straight male, and we have these conversations amongst ourselves, even with women. It's being a narrative pushed on society that oh you look at the cartoons they gay it's being forced down your throat the music you know the movies do you feel that that's accurate yes yes i do because i feel like it's getting more exposed to society because you know that's what that's a part of every day that's what people are starting to accept mm -hmm. so they trying to i you know what i also feel like though that they use, they'll grab a gay person and put them in a scene just so that the gay community can watch it or or to just adapt to that. You know what I'm saying? Just like um, I just watched um, a show a couple of weeks ago, um, Lizzo's show, and she got this, a gay transgender man in her show, and I just she put him all the way to the end. I feel like other people could have won, but... He had talent too, you know what I'm saying? But I just felt like it was just to bring the light in for other people to to do it. And she, she, in the end of her her show, I just felt like it was beautiful. Like it was like, damn, like she was helping people. that part of, yeah. of it. And then, but like going back to what you're saying, like I feel like they put people, they put gay men or gay women in a show just so that 
we could see or, or other people could see it because it's like that's what goes on every day in our lives too. Like every day you're going to walk past a gay person and you're going to see gay people. There's more gay people now, you know. There's, mm-hmm. there's so many different types, but not just it's not just about gay. It, you got to also look at it too. Like there's kids that's looking up to um, Instagram models and trying to be like, trying to be like that too, you know, trying to, oh, I'm going to get my body done, or oh, I'm going to go pay $5,000 and go get my body done because I just seen this, this girl with a big old booty on the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I just saw this person on a TV show with a nice body. I want that, you know? So I, it's, to me, I just feel like that with with that, with all that, I just feel like that it's just, it's just like too much, like, too much of being being weak minded, you know what I'm saying? I feel like people be weak minded and wanna do stuff like that. Like do you, are you thinking of it like influencing people? Mm-hmm. Or are you, or are you thinking of it like as people trying to wanna be like that? Or because we saw some a gay cartoon, I'm gonna I wanna be gay or or I wanna try it or I wanna see what it's like to be like that. I just this is what you expose to your kids, and, what and that's what people have a problem with. They feel like it's being forced on the kids and ourselves, and gen- for those that don't support that lifestyle, mm-hmm. a lot of people feel like that's being forced. Um, and that's why I said, "Do you, why I was more so posing the question: Do you feel like it's being forced, or more so people that live that lifestyle they're getting their just due?" Mm. Mm. I don't know, because I feel like to me. Personally, I just feel like, you know, you live your life for you, you know, mm-hmm. and if we see it, we see it, you know, just like I see a lot of straight things and stuff like that. So it don't bother me. None of this bothers me. E- even with me being, a, as long as we're not being judged, we shouldn't have a problem. I don't care what's going on in your bedroom. I I feel like uh, a lot of straight men be sitting around here like, oh, don't come at me. I don't want you by me because you're a gay dude. Like, or I, I, I go into a bar and people will walk away. Move. I'll be sitting at a bar and grabbing a drink, and a man will be standing next to me, looking at me like they'll look twice because they're like, "Is that a man or a woman?" Like they don't know who I am, mm-hmm. which is cool. But then when they notice I'm a man, they, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let me get away from him. Uh, like, like I got the cooties or something. <laughs> I ain't got no damn cooties. Get the hell out of here. But, so I, you do know that I think we all judge, you know, to a degree. I'll tell you my perspective on it. I think that there is an agenda being pushed when it comes to that lifestyle of being gay. But I agree with you that there's an agenda being pushed throughout the world, period. Period. You know, for those that feel like it should be a man and a woman, when you look at movies, there's a section strictly for that. Mm -hmm. Like you said, people want these models now or women in general to look a certain way. Mm-hmm. So you see the celebrities, the influencers getting this work done on their body. Everybody's running to do it. They're spending their tax money, PPP money, <laughs> everything. The money. They, they selling everything they can so they can go get this work done on mm-hmm. their body because that's considered beauty nowadays. Mm-hmm. So everything is being pushed. But I think that the issue um, a lot of people don't want to address is yeah, there's an agenda across the board being pushed. We speak out when it's something we don't care for. Because, let's be realistic, when it comes to two women sleeping together. People love it. We love it. We accept it. It's just like, ah, oh, that's cool. Yes. When it comes to two men, then it's, oh, no, 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 no. That, yeah, and, double standard. And it's not for me, but I'm not sitting there, sitting there, you know, looking at it saying, well, damn, these two men is kissing. My kids, you know, if they see that, they're going to be, because let's be realistic. I know a lot of people going to hate me for this right here, but the Cosby Show was one of the biggest shows ever. Yeah. I don't see no more motherfucking Heathcliff Huxtables in this motherfucker. <laughs> I, I don't. Like, <laughs> right. literally, there's not a lot of men living that lifestyle, you know, making sure that this woman I had this child with, we're raising them together. You know, she's successful. I'm successful. There is no, uh, you know, roles of a man is supposed to do this. A woman is supposed to do this. Society is steadily changing. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I will say this, the, the issue that I have with the group, the same way I feel you should have the right to express yourself and be whoever you are. I should also have the right to say, I don't agree with this lifestyle. Once you open your mouth and say you don't agree or oh, it's canceled culture. Now, I will I will give give this group credit. They will shut some shit down. Right. Them motherfuckers are smart where they band together. And I love that part about that group. Like, literally, they will sit there and say, oh, if you say this or, or you don't give me a fair opportunity when it comes to work or the way we're portrayed, we'll shut, shut some shit down. And it's mm -hmm. even got to a space where government is scared. So I will say that. Um, what would you say to that? So, so wait. Wait, you just said something like, um, um, you don't agree to what the lifestyle. Uh, so it's not for me. I'm not into men. Right. I don't have an issue with you liking men. If that if that's your thing okay. or a, another woman liking another woman, I don't necessarily have an issue with the lifestyle. I'm just saying it's not, it's for, not for me. I, exactly. I've never looked at a man and was like, damn, this nigga. Maybe I see yeah. like, <laughs> this nigga. Say, that's never right. been my thing. Right. You know what I'm no, saying? Yeah. So. The lifestyle itself is, is is not for me where I'm into it, but I don't have an issue with somebody being gay. But, you know, what people get it messed up at to me, I feel like is where they so worried about the lifestyle of it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And not the personality and who that person could. Gay don't define who I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you put me in a category. That's what society already did. Yeah. Society already put me in a category as a gay man. So... Okay, and but that that doesn't define who I am as a person. I'm still a Latin man. I'm still carrying myself like, um, and I look like this right now. But in a couple of years, I might want to have a beard and, and braid to the back. And you know, mm -hmm. you know, everybody is different. It's level to being gay to me. Um, well, it's level to the gay community lifestyle yeah. and community. Um, because there's people out here that there's a lot of women that. I call them part-time gay women. They gay for a couple months because the man it. broke their heart, and they turn around and go back to being with men. Like you be with a woman for six months and then turn around and go be with a man, or you be with a woman for fifteen years and then you leave him and go be with a man. Mm -hmm. So leave her and go be with a man. I mean, but it's, to me, I just feel like the 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 lifestyle of being gay. I just and putting that out there in the world and stuff like that, I um, I think it's good for people to know it. Um, it could be on um, cartoon shows, TV shows, stuff like that. I just think it's just to give a platform for people to understand that, mm -hmm. you know, we still matter. You know, gay people still matter. Um, uh, trans still matter. You know, there's a lot of hate out here in the world, so a lot of people are hating on a lot of our community and in our community, even just like not just with us, but it's with all of us. Our lives matter. And I just feel like that with people doing all this stuff, it's just like I, I feel like it's best for um platform to put um gay community out there in it because it's just for people could see it, you know, young adults, young kids, um, even older people because a lot of older people are closed minded. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand it. And then I just feel like it's not for everybody to understand. I didn't want to understand your lifestyle. I didn't want to understand your straight lifestyle. I never wanted to know what, what the hell you did. You know, I, don't dig too much on me because I am who I am or I'm different from other people. Don't do not do that to me. Now, I will throw this out. So that, that goes along with something that I said. Um, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. If you choose to live your life a certain way, that should be your personal business. But then... When I say that I don't agree with this, then it's oh you can't say that. No, so you they're, can't. They're, now you cool with you can, you can it, say but it. let's be realistic. If yeah. you get on certain platforms and you say like I'm against this, it's not for me or I don't like it. You know, mm -hmm. and some people could say you shouldn't speak on everything. But if if everybody, in my opinion, everybody should have the right to voice their opinion about whatever the case may be. Yeah. If we're having this dialogue, and I say I don't think two men should be together. That's my personal business. Oh, I'm yeah. not sitting there saying, oh, I hate oh, you because yeah. you like a man. That's right. not what I said. I'll just say it. It ain't for me. I don't agree with it. Right. But do you. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that, that's how I, I, I am. I feel like 
we are in a lot of people's business about certain stuff that does not oh, yeah. have anything to do with us. But I don't like when people are censored. I'm a firm believer that you should be able to say what you want to say, do what you want to do, but accept whatever consequence comes with that. Mm -hmm. So if you are a person that's speaking out against a certain group of people that's living a, a, a life that they want to live and you get backlash from it, you should be able to accept that. Mm -hmm. But if you are a person that's getting out here saying, I'm gay, I like this, this is my lifestyle, and people criticize that, whatever comes with that, it, you know, you got to accept yeah. that, too. So yeah. that, that's just kind of how I feel about it. It also goes with the image, too. Like, a lot of people don't have to sit up here and ask me, are you gay? Because they could just tell, like, I am who I am, you know? So, mm -hmm. um... I, I just feel like that when when people want to question you about who you are, I feel like you should just be able to tell them who the hell you are, you know. Um, but I also feel like that you can't make somebody do this or hey, are you you hey you gay? Like I feel like when people ask questions like that, like hey, are you gay? Like if somebody else, like, should I tell you who I am or do I want to tell you? That's why a lot of people are in the closet because the the backlash that you get as a gay man, like, oh, he's too feminine, or oh, he a, a fag, or he, he does, or he a queer, or, don't talk to him, you know what I'm saying? That's why it's a lot of people that are in the closet right now because they don't want to get that frame, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I, I feel like that a lot of stuff that they probably putting out on, on TV is to show that A, B, yourself. I, it don't necessarily got to be gay to be who you want to be. Do whatever you want to do. It's for you. You know, it's your life. If nobody else is like, don't don't worry about what everybody else has to say. That's how I look at it. I, I say that to every young kid, every young woman, every young man that is coming up, coming out the closet or mm -hmm. trying to be who they want to be. At. Be yourself. Life is too short. To just be you for real. Because one day you're going to sit back and be like, damn, I did this for everybody. And what did it get you? It didn't get me nowhere because I'm still hiding in the damn closet, sitting here looking crazy. And that that's something I could speak to on an experience, something I went through with myself. Like, I had all brothers in the house, and I'm like, I'm looking at all of them. Like, they got women. I'm like, I'm going to get a girl, too. And I got women. I had girlfriends. I had several girlfriends. And a lot of people, when I tell them that, they're like, you got a girlfriend? What the fuck? You? Mm -hmm. But I didn't always look like this, you know? So, um... Like something that we talked about, like I got my pictures on the internet, so you could see like the before picture and then my after picture. Like I'm still the same person, though, you know. But like I was like, damn, I'm my mom. I'm just trying to impress everybody. Mm -hmm. Then you know, my brother got murdered, and I was like, you know what? It just encouraged me to be myself, and I just went in and just I'm just gonna be me. I, I know he would want me to be me. Um, I do everything I do because my brother, you know what I'm saying? Like, he motivated me to be who I am. And, you know, with him being gone, it's like I could, I feel like I feel him sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. even on my way here, it was just like, I could feel my brother, like, do your thing, enjoy yourself, have fun, you know? So it's, 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 a, it's, it's an amazing thing, but it's also something that taught me a lot to just be strong. That's why you have to be strong. Being a gay man, you got to be strong. You got, you have to. You can't be weak. You cannot be weak at all. I'm sorry. Because once you start being weak, you're going to get dragged into it. You can be on drugs. You're going to be a prostitute. You're going to be sucked in somewhere, you know. And it, and it's crazy, but it's sad. But it happens. In 2022, do you feel like there's still struggles being a gay man? Oh, yeah. I think it will always be like that. I don't. I, but you know what? I feel like a lot of people also take being gay is like oh my god like i need somebody to feel sorry for me because i'm a gay man no do your thing you got to be strong get up toughen yourself up figure it out mm -hmm. you could do it you know be yourself what does that look like figuring it out on your own you know to say that i went through these things because maybe you got thicker skin than somebody else oh yeah and they may look at this and say yeah it was easy for you you might have had a support system or, you know, maybe the death of your brother just put you in a mindset to say, I am who I am. Like, mm -hmm. fuck all y'all. Well, when people with, with don't have tougher skin, they eventually will. Because I just feel like that, and 
a lifestyle, every every lifestyle. You know, if you're weak somewhere, if you continue, try, if you're going for something that you want mm -hmm. or to something and being who you are, you're gonna eventually build yourself. And 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 from a weak way, you're gonna go up into your strong ways, and then you're gonna figure it out, and you just grow. With me, it was just thank God that I I had a, a strong mother that I could look up to and be like, okay, I gotta be strong. Period. I'm, I got brothers. I got. I, you know, I got family, so I'm, I'm just gonna be strong on this, you know, and and, and just go through. It, it it I was weak at first. I remember being weak, but it just got got me through my process. It was like losing my battery, you know what I'm saying? And then I just flowed in, and then I became who I am. How did your brothers react when they realized you were gay? <laughs> they love me. <laughs> they love. They still love me. You know, support. they they support me 101 percent. Like. If I wanted to go put a dress on, they're going to be like, hey, go do your thing. Mm -hmm. I still love you. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still being me. I got my girls over here. I'm, okay. You know, we always were close. Um, it, it just, they always supported me. I remember when I was acting like I was not gay. And my my older brother, my mom was like, my mom was sitting in the living room at the time. And she was like, is you messing with him? And I'm like, no, you can ask my brother. And then she was like, she called my brother to the living room, like, is he gay? And then he's like, no, he ain't gay. Like, and I'm looking at him like, I didn't even like give him the 401 or nothing. He was just like, he just came in like, Ma, leave him alone. He ain't gay, leave him alone. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'm like, when I went in my room, I'm like, damn, thank God he didn't, thank God he didn't tell, her, tell her. But, you know, at, my mom already knew, you know, when I came out to her, I just felt like it was just a shocking thing because. You could look at something and be like, I already know. But you always going to sit there and think like, I already know. But when you actually get the answer, you're going to be like, I knew that, but damn. Well, I told you about the story that it fucked me up because I thought I knew, you know, in our mind. Mm -hmm. Or you look at hand gestures or certain ways somebody's movement is. And I saw this black brother that I thought was just a regular black brother. And I saw him leave with another man. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh. He gay gay. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, I didn't have an issue with it, but it just fucked me up because we assume we know and we can spot. Like you said, you kind of know, but a lot of times yeah. we don't. I damn sure didn't know. What was that coming out moment for you when you told your mother? And you know what's crazy about that? I didn't care about the world knowing if I was a gay man. I was so worried about my mom, like, damn, Just the family. if I was to tell her, like, she's not going to love me or she's not going to look at me the same or all my other brothers are just straight men, you know, she had mm -hmm. all boys, you know, my mom come from a, a, a tough situation. So, um, I just, you know, with me coming out to her, it was just like, it was easy. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Like, I swear I was like, she's going to kill me. You know, damn, we, damn, we probably not going to have the best relationship no more. It took my mom time, though, because me coming out to her, it took her a lot of time. And I feel like that's what it is with a lot of people that's trying to come out. They're so scared of what the people that love say about them. And I always just say, if they love you, they're going to always accept you no matter what. They got to adjust to it and understand it in order to know who you are. Because if you sit back in, the, in in a corner and not tell nobody who you are, of course nobody's not going to question it or understand it because you're not explaining it. You're not talking about it. You're not being yourself. You're not being your authentic self at all. And with me coming out to my mother, it, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I wasn't like other people that hold it in. And, you know, this is just my journey. So I'm just... I was I was happy that I had the ball to do that because I thought I was never gonna have the ball to do that. And the only reason why I came out to her is because I was in, about to get engaged to another man. Mm. Yeah, I was like, if I was to marry this man, I, I want her to be a part of my wedding. So I gotta tell her something. Yep. And it's crazy because I, <laughs> it's so funny. And I know he's probably gonna be like, damn. I had him, I had my ex fiance in the basement when my mom was up there, then my aunt was going to tell her, like, you know, your son is gay, and he got somebody here, and he wants you to meet him. And it was just, it was like a TV show. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was a good outcome because she got to know me better. She got to understand me a little bit more. Um, 
And and that was that was the best thing about it. And it just taught me to continue to be myself, like do it. And then when I got the to me, when I got the idea of like being myself and being respected by straight men, because I'm I'm walking in with my confidence. I'm gonna be me. I'm get a lot of I got, I'm cool with a lot of a lot of men that I hood and you know I'm from the hood too. It's just we all cool. Everybody love me. Everybody respect me. It, I never got bullied. I never got none of that. I got people to talk about me behind my back. Like is he gay? I remember being a freshman. And have all the girls with me, like all the dudes would be like, "He gay, he gay, he gay." And at the time, I was like, "I ain't tell nobody I'm gay. I'm I'm a straight man. Like I got all the girls. You know what I'm saying?" But um, now it's just like they all love me. It's it's all no respect because I respect. You know, it's the level when I tell you it's level to being gay. It's a lot of gays that are disrespectful, that I like extra flamboyant or. Just don't care what you think as a straight man. They're going to shake their ass in front of you. They're going to, um, oh, you fine. You look like them. You're not like, okay, calm down. You, you don't do that. Don't mm-hmm. overstep your boundaries to another man. That's just disrespectful to me. I never had to. I never did that. You know, I let everything flow out. Like, we cool. You know what I'm saying? I don't look at, I don't care how fine you is. You're a cool person. If you have a good personality and, and you're a great person, that's, that's cool. And that's how I want people to look at me. Straight men, straight women. Everybody, not just men, period, just everybody, like, even gay men, like, you don't have to be extra, you don't have to do the most to be who you are. You don't have to show people that you're gay. You don't, because once you start showing people that you're gay, it's like, okay, you gay. You don't got to be extra with the, with the, with the being loud and the yes and the, no, you don't got to do all that. What would you say is a misconception about somebody being gay? Um, you gave me one that I thought was real good when you brought up just because I'm gay don't necessarily mean I want you but is there any other misconceptions that you yeah saying? because a lot of people think because you gay you want every you want all all the men or you want I don't care how you look I don't care what you, even I it's crazy because I have people the ugliest dude stand next to me that's a straight man and thought that I wanted him like boy get your get, bye don't nobody want you. And when you get it twisted as, like, you could have made a fan out of me. You had a great fan. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, I necessarily don't look at, I don't look at n- no man like, oh, I want them or this and this and that. Like, if we ain't on the same page, then I ain't looking at Except them. Except Dave East. Hmm? Except Dave East. Oh, yeah, Dave East. He's seen you post the Dave East. <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing the Dave East post, so that's one you look at. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm definitely looking at him, but, you know, he a celebrity. You know, a lot of people, it's a lot of celebrities that I could sit up there and be like, but if I was to see Dave East, I would never, I would never run up on him and be like, oh, God. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? It would never be like, I'm going to go crazy and make this man look at me like, Get this gay dude out of my face. You know what I'm saying? If anything, I'm going to make the man feel comfortable and would like to take a picture with me. So that's, just, yeah, even though he's fine. <laughs> fine <or> too. <laughs> Dave, he's more, more your speed. Okay, gangster style. Would you ever consider messing with a woman? Um, or you just, I'm over it. Straight me in. Mm-mm. I'm not over it. Um, I, I wouldn't mind. See, that's I mean, what the thought provoker, but I'm changing your mind. No, I just <laughs> okay, I, you know, a lot of people look at me. There's a lot of women that still try to holler at me. Yeah. You know, I, they're in my inbox. So uh, it's, my inbox be crazy, but. I wanted to know that too. Like, do women try and tempt you? Just oh, to yeah. see, like, is this a real thing? No. For real, for real. For real. Yes. Um, beautiful women. I, it made me. I had a woman in the club looking at my neck, and I was like, "Damn, maybe I should take her home." Oh, shit. You know, like I, maybe I do like this again. Like, but I'm like going off topic. But speaking about the women, I'm not gonna have a threesome with two men. I'm gonna have with a woman and a man. If I ever was, I never had one before. But if I was to ever have one, it's gonna be with a woman and a man. And and when I when I say that it's like all right, because what 
No, it's just because that's something I, I, I always looked at it like that. I never looked at it like an, a, any other way. So, yes, I, I, I still like women. I, I still think I would never be with a woman. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, answering your question, yes, I can definitely. It, I can't say, like Keisha Cole, she's gorgeous. She's a beautiful woman. If she wants to come holler at me, I'm definitely going. I'm going for her. <laughs> now, let me ask this. Do you break bro code because you like men? So when these women come talk to you and they trying to figure out what's what with the men, do you break bro code and say, well, the reason why he said A, B, and C is because he really doing this. Do you be breaking bro code? No. Okay, we can respect that. Mm-hmm. Nah, that, that's none of my business. I can't do that. That's not for me. I'm sure people try it, though. Oh, yeah. I get, you know, people put me in so many situations like, like that, yeah. I, I definitely don't entertain that. You know, Mm-mm. that that keep that. I don't want that. Let me ask you this: A lot of men criticize the lifestyle. I can't understand how a man can get with another man. Do you see some of these posts and spot people that you say you saying all this? But you in my inbox. Yeah. Lord. I see a lot of them posters all the time. I be like, boy, get out of here. And you the main one in my inbox. You always, you, you in my inbox begging me right now just to take me to go get some McDonald's or something. Get out of my face. Why do you think that that's a trend? Well, if it's a trend, why do you think this is a thing that people do? Because a lot of people, a lot of men are curious right now. And they want to know what you're about. And because they never had it, they want to see what it is about. And because I make it look so good, they're going to be like, damn, man, let me see what you... I get My name on Facebook is Antonio De La Cruz. People get in my inbox and be like, what's up, girl? Uh, or be like, um, damn, be like, you sexy as hell. And then five minutes later, I don't respond. You know, I'm not responding to it. Mm-hmm. Five minutes later, they're going to write back and say, oh, my bad, bro. I thought you was a girl. You clearly Go to do. bed. You, you get out my inbox, do. please. And then it, it's just like you're still not getting a response. So you, you might as well just block me or do whatever you want to do. But, you know, I, I'm so used to that. It's whatever. That's why it makes, sometimes that makes me, like, want to take the wig off and take the nails off and just be my authentic. Like, I'm, this is me, but just let me just be a man. Shit. Let me be the man that I am. Like, you know what's crazy? I, I really believe that there's a lot more men and women willing to come out and say, this is me. But I think society makes all these rules of you can't be this way. You got to do this. You got to yeah. do and, and whatever you believe, that's that's perfectly fine. But that's why you have people that's on the down low. And people get so upset like, why don't you just be who you are? But then when I do, y'all got memes and y'all... You know, dragging me through social media. Y'all got all the criticism. Y'all bullying. Y'all, you know, I couldn't imagine. I mean, for you to say as strong as you are, I couldn't imagine coming out being gay. Like, I think that there's a lot of positives to it, Mm -hmm. you know, where a lot of people do rally behind you and say, like, hey, you you know, I I share your story. or You know, that's brave of you. But for the people that don't support that lifestyle, straight men who like, nah, fuck that. A man's supposed to be with a woman. You got people who going to talk shit you know you're a fag you're a sissy you this i'll beat your ass and all all of the most and i'll beat your ass too um but <laughs> speak you know on that saying? you know what i'm saying because don't ever get a twister with a gay man you know because you're a little bit more masculine and i'm over here feminine and don't think i won't do that to you but i just feel like like that's a good point because i just feel like a lot of but you know it's a lot of people that are not coming out the closet because of the criticizing mm-hmm. and the fact that their lifestyle and who they are, you know what I'm saying? But they're still not going to stop themselves from being who they are. They're, they're just going to consider themselves as a down-low man and be comfortable with that. You know, there's some people that just get comfortable in who they are. But, oh, I got my girlfriend and then I got him on the side. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you, it, that's not cool, but I just feel like at some point you have to set a boundary for yourself in your lifestyle if you're going to be like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But... It's the story behind being down low, too, for a lot of down low people that I, because I know a couple people that I, and I can understand them. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I get it, you know. 
Most definitely. And it's all respect. You know, it's a respect level to that. You know, it, it, it's very serious. People get killed over exposing down low men. Gay men get killed for outing them, you know. And you, you got to watch who you deal with. That's all I say. Just watch who you deal with and you'll be good. Like, But definitely, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of levels to this lifestyle, too. You know, I always, wanted, I always tell myself, I wanted to know how it is to be a straight man, you know. Um, pretty nice, and just in case you was wondering. Pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, pretty nice. <laughs> a lot of pleasures to it. God put them curves on them women for a reason. Okay. And that's why it created me to enjoy all of that. <laughs> hey. A lot of, come on back and try it. Don't hurt. <laughs> Don't hurt. Come on back and try. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> you say you ain't fooling with <laughs> I'm that. I'm cool. I'm cool. I already, I'm good where I'm at. Yeah, and, and you and you should be comfortable being who you are. Oh, like, yeah. Don't let nobody try and change that about you. If if that's your mindset, if that's what you enjoy. Because one thing about it is I always say when it comes to relationships, I'm not going to be in no situation that I'm miserable in. Oh, yeah. I'm just faking the funk. You know, I'm, I'm just going through the motions of it. Like, no, I deserve to be happy, too. So mm-hmm. if that's the lifestyle that you choose, live your truth. And that, that should be nobody's fucking business. Because what you do in the privacy of your bedroom has nothing to do with me. Yeah, I'm going to go on over here and do my thing. It, it doesn't stop exactly. me. So it's like, okay. I wish a lot of people thought like you. Because there's a lot of ignorant people out there that want to know. And then it's like, okay, if I tell you, is that going to make you change your mind? Like, are you going to look at me a certain way or what? You know? Um, I, I wish that everybody could think like how you just said it because it, that's the best way you should. Like, mm-hmm. get out of people's bedroom. Yeah. Stay out of somebody's bedroom. You don't need all that. You don't need to know what's going on. You don't need to know what they're doing at all, period. And I think that that can change if more of these conversations are being had. You know, there's so much being filtered nowadays. If you want to come out and speak your truth, there's a group of people that's telling you, you shouldn't say this, you shouldn't do this, don't do this in front of my kids or my family members. It's too much of it being on TV. But then mm-hmm. on the opposite side, if I'm a person that's saying, I don't agree with this lifestyle, I don't think two men should be kissing, they should be holding hands, I don't think two women should be doing it, there's a group of people who sitting there saying, mind your business, this ain't got nothing to do with you, you shouldn't be speaking. Up. So it's, it's on both sides, a whole bunch of censoring, instead oh, yeah. of us coming together to have a conversation. Now, I will tell you, the one the one thing that does get me, and I just be like, make this make sense to me, the women. Mm-hmm. Women will say, I don't want men anymore. And they'll go over there and get them another woman. Cool. But then you go get a woman, and then she cut her hair like a dude. She dressed like a dude. Mm-hmm. You putting a strap on, because you not a dude. Right. You might as well go on here and be with a dude, in my opinion. Well, you know, that that's not accurate because people, well, some women to me that deal with like studs mm-hmm. and stuff like that, they like the the dominant okay. of a woman instead of in the masculine of a woman because they, I got a, a gay sister that like her women a little bit more dominant and then then now she like her women a little bit more feminine but it's it's a difference between a stud and a man yeah you pretending to be that's what the difference is to me pretending what do you mean pretending like well if 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 you say i like a woman but this you, woman is pretending to be a man like you're dressing like a man you you you're you're Acting as but, if you're a man, like everything is. But they still got the women body parts. She's still stuck in the Why you act, then be a woman? Then act like a woman. Well, why? Why act like a man? Well, because people prefer like that. Just like me. Like why? Why don't you go get you a woman then if you want to be with me? But they being with me because of my body part. You know what I'm saying? So the way I present myself, yes. I could be a feminine dude, but I'm still a man. Or if I had some titties and an ass and have taken hormones and turned myself into a woman, you know, they still taking me as my body part. Mm-hmm. Period. You know, um, those women, you know, to me, sorry to the ladies out there, but a lot of women to me are easily influenced. So, yeah. and it's easier for them 
and it's a lot of them got a pass because it's easier for them to be gay to me than versus a man going to, oh, I'm gay or trying to be gay. I don't know, you know, because it's either you in or you're not. Oh, yeah, ain't no coming back. So mm-hmm. once once a man attempts to do anything with a man, you gay forever oh, in, yeah. in the eyes of another man. But a woman, <laughs> she can dibble and dabble, and we celebrate it. We oh, yes. like, oh, you like women? So, I mean, can I get both of y'all? And then if you decide I just want men, then we cool with that too. Just like, just like when women bring, just like when heterosexual relations, like a woman and a man, mm-hmm. a man would be okay for the women to bring another, another woman. woman. Mm-hmm. But what if a woman wanted to bring another man into the room? We lose our shit. <laughs> we lose our shit. You know, the, the, see, it's a mental thing for us. It's a mental thing for us. Think it too damn much. Yeah, it, it, that's exactly what it is. Because if this woman doing all these sexual acts that we love and you got my eyes rolling in the back of my head and my feet curled over, when another man is around, the first thing we think, oh, shit, is she doing that for him? Is he jumping up and down on my woman the way I would once be doing it? Like, right. it, it's a, and it constantly plays on your mental. Was this person better than me? But what if the man want to touch the man? You know what I'm saying? Like, just like the women and the women touching on each other just to get the man roused up. What if a woman is dominated? She's she's very aggressive in her area, and she wants, hey, babe, get on him. Or you get on him. You know what I'm saying? Like that. What that make him? A goddamn fool is what I'm going to say. Goddamn it. That ain't nothing I'm going to get off into, but you know, to each his own, you know? Yeah, like you know, like yeah. I just told you, all them curves that this woman got, you know, God bless me with that right there, you okay. know? But, but to each his own, you know? But that that is a lot of what I see going on. Mm-hmm. There's a stigma that comes with all of this, and and it's a hundred percent true. A woman does get a pass; she can dibble and dabble with both. She can. That's not cool. I feel like everybody should be equal. Then everybody should understand that. Hey, you like what you like. I like what I like. It's, it shouldn't be a double standard to the situation at all. Period. It, it you you get it or you don't. That's it. We care because it's a benefit to us. That's all. That, I mean, that's, that, let's call it what it really is. Like, a man is okay with a woman. And there, there's no yeah. there's no real threat in, in our mind. Until she leave your ass for another woman. Then that becomes a threat. Oh, yeah, because I know a lot of men that are insecure about um, other women. And mm-hmm. I could I could never... I can never hate on a woman or hate on another man. If I was in a relationship with somebody and I knew my man was bisexual and he liked this girl, I'm not going to be mad at her. Why should I be mad at her? She don't got what I got. I don't got. I don't got a coochie like her. Mm-hmm. She got titties and a pussy. I don't. I, I can't. I can't take that away from her. I got what I have, and he loved me for what I have, and he might love you for what you got. You know, and that's what make them that. And where I get at, I will never be in competition with you. So just like when men, when I see straight men hate on women that like other women, and I seen it. I seen it a lot, and. That nigga, something wrong with him. Mm-hmm. He got issues for real. He, he, mm, mm, mm. We just we we even got in a place where we in everybody's business overall. <laughs> that that's that's where we at, like literally. But I I will say social media adds to that too, because oh, yeah. we post everything, and you know a lot of people do get upset. Where let's just say you posting these pictures of yourself or you know your lifestyle, what you into, and not to say you doing it, but I'm just saying a person that does do it. Mm-hmm. We instantly feel the need to comment. Or we don't necessarily say nothing to you. You know what we do. We screenshot it. We send it to our people. And, man, look at this motherfucker right here. Ain't no way. Oh, yeah. You know, it. it we I get just that a that lot. Place. Like, yeah, we, we don't know how to run our fucking business. All the time. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, it's amazing that your family did support you um, behind your decision of coming out. My whole family, everybody, everybody. And, you know, it, it was so scary because, like, you know, we I have a real hardcore family, a strong family with strong minds. And, you know, some people got closed-minded, uh, very closed-minded in my family. Mm-hmm. But when me, I think, I think I'm the only gay cousin, brother, aunt, uncle. I'm the only one mm-hmm. out of all my family. No, I don't, m- my sister, yeah. But me being the first one to come out, like, to my whole family, it, 
got the support system that I got from them, and they still love me and support me 101%. Like, it's that's why I am who I am. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why I'm I'm a boss now. So it, it, it's amazing. It's beautiful. I I I love it. I'm very appreciative around it. But like other people that don't get that, you know, it should make them stronger. You know what I'm saying? Like just continue to believe in yourself and and, and be you and and not care. Because once you start believing in yourself. And taking that, it doesn't necessarily got to be with your sexuality, just within you, like, and who you are. You going to work on being you and being better, and, and you ain't going to need nobody later on. In the long run, you ain't. But me being who I am and getting my family to accept me, it, it, it was a beautiful thing to me. And I would... I wasn't shocked because they always supported me in what I did. Like, mm-hmm. even with me coming out and then being a hairstylist, like, like how you said, it's the good and bad thing when it comes to being um, gay. Because the good thing about it is that I get all the women, and yeah. I get all the money with being a hairstylist. People, uh, women will come get their hair done by a man before they go get their hair done by another woman, because they know that this gay man is gonna tell me the truth. Um, so I get this hairstyle, and so I look like this. So what you think about it, Antonio? I'm like, and a lot of my women that sit in my chair, they be like, "First style me," or. What you think about it? Uh, and and uh, I work with a lot of my clients that come get their hair done by me. They been getting their hair done by me. I did ten plus hairstyles on them, so I already know their head. Let me see. What you gonna wear? I always tell a woman, "What you finna wear?" And I didn't go off of that and then design you up, you know. And I always tell people that it's not what you wear down here. My women, what you wear down here is what you wearing up here. All this, you gotta make this presentable. You gotta make sure you look good. See, the clothes, you can be real simple and have all this looking real nice. That's it. How long have you been doing here? I've been doing here for about eight years. Eight years. Um, you know, um, when I first started doing hair, I want to say, like, hairstyle then was different from hairstyle now. We got frontals, we got closers, we got wigs, we got all of that, you know, right now. Then nobody was getting that. Everybody was getting the, the little leave out with the little... Your real hair, we're gonna press that out with a the, the couple of little track glue in, the mm-hmm. quick weave, and stuff like that. Now it's, it's different, it, it went up. Um, so I've been doing closures and frontals and, and wigs for the past four years now. Um, dedicating myself to my craft it was the best thing I ever did for me, you know. And it was just because, like, it made me more interested in hair because I'm like, damn, how you mount that frontal on your head and look like yours? Mm-hmm. You know, and, oh, yeah. I, and I've seen people, like, I didn't think being a hairstylist, you could make money or you could be somebody. The hair business I didn't, I didn't think that. I didn't, I, I swear to God, I remember I was going to college for business and management because I just wanted to manage the business. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that would make me a lot of money. And the whole time I went through um a bad situation during college and I came back home and I was like, you know, I'm finna start hustling. I'm just finna do somebody's hair for fifty dollars. I right. I did somebody's hair for fifty dollars and word of mouth is the best thing that ever happened to me. And one person told another person, another person and it you know, it went on for so many years and it was amazing to me because I'm like, damn, my name is still booming. Like even till today, you know, my name is still out there. It's still it's still trending and people are still talking about me. So it's it's beautiful. Like I love it. Like being a hairstylist, I never thought I'd be one mm-hmm. because I was thinking I was gonna be somebody in in somebody's hotel managing something in there. You know, downtown Chicago mm-hmm. in a a business um, corporation and stuff like that. But no, I'm I'm my own boss now and working on my own craft and and, and building my brand. It, it's a beautiful thing. It's tough. But I think Imagine. it's all going to be worth it in the end. Just like every other big platform business, you got to start from the bottom to get to the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So you overall get more love than you get hate. Yeah, I have to. You got, cause I, I, don't, I don't come off as, uh, I, I give love. So you feel like they're a hater. If, they, if somebody the just ain't like you, they're just a hater. <laughs> oh, yeah, you really a hater for real. Cause I, I ain't got no jealous bone in my body. Mm-hmm. I love everybody. So when... I know, you know, we know a hater when we see one. Um, I love them too. For real, because 
you know, I'll be at home by my time and be like, yeah, they got me fucked up. <laughs> but when I really get to it, it's like, whatever, you can't get to me. Thank you. You know, I was raised different. You was raised different. I don't know. Maybe I should help you somewhere. If you, and it's crazy because I was just talking about this earlier to a friend of mine. People don't support people no more. No, they don't. Not at all. I don't care. A stranger would support my business than somebody I knew for 15 years. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it, 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 it's a lot to that, too. Like, I, you know, me being a gay man, women love me. And that's what makes my business. Women make my business. And I appreciate that. that Most I, of I, these businesses, yes. A lot of women, yes. And it, it's, it, I don't get a lot of straight men advertising me unless I seen them in the club and like, hey, you, I want you to do my girl hair because um, I know you do some hair. You know, stuff like that. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. That was like a compliment. I take that as a compliment. Cool. But, you know, I still don't get that, that support from men, but I definitely get it all from the women. It, all the ladies and young kids, like even Luke, I'm 29 years old. Um, they kids that are 15, 16, 17 years old and looking at me like, oh my God, I need him to do my hair. It's like celebrity status. They they looking at me like that. And, it, and it's crazy because I, I always doubt myself. Like, I'm not, no, I'm not like that. I'm not, I'm not that. I'm not that. I'm not that. I'm not that. But I, I need to start saying I am that. Stop doubting myself. I worked. I worked. I worked myself for the past eight years to get to where I'm at right now. And this is just the peak for me. I got more. It's, it's more to do. And it and it's beautiful. Like I love it. How do we change that that support for you? Where, like you said, straight men don't support you. They won't share your stuff. How do we change that? Have you sat back and even gave that any thought, or do you not even care? Um, I really don't care. Um, because there is some straight men that I feel like that do support it. Like, I'm not going to say all straight men don't support me, but majority of them don't. But the ones that do it, the ones that probably personally know who I am. So, yeah, um, how do we change that? Open your mind. Then it's just start opening their minds and understand, like, it's not, it's not about the the sexual um the person because that's why I feel like when people are like, oh he's a gay man, like he's a gay man. No, that's not worrying about his sexual life. Like, I could be masculine. If I was sitting here at this table being a masculine man with a beard and all that, I probably would have had straight men and gay guys and women supporting me. But because of my image and who I am a lot of them is scared to be who they are, so that's why they don't support me. I'm going to tell you, I don't even think it's so much is about who you are. I think we're so scared of not knowing ourselves and letting others dictate how we're viewed. Because if I take a picture with you, if I repost your stuff. I don't take a picture with me. Because you're gay, society's going to say, oh, if you support that, you got to be that too. Where... Nah, I, I think that the work is dope, you know, and, and I, I'm a person who I spoke to you about this before years ago. One of my baby mothers wanted to get a hairstyle done and mm -hmm. I suggested it to you, mm -hmm. suggested you to her. Yes. It's not a big deal, but I know we wasn't social media friends. I saw your stuff come down my timeline from other people sharing it. So I was like, OK, cool. But I don't damn sure don't feel no type of way supporting your stuff like for one this is what this platform is for you know to have conversation but i also want to highlight people's business as well and let yeah. them get the opportunity to put it out there because that's a lot of times what's missing we have the people that know us a lot of times or our core you know following that will support what we do but what about the people in cities that we're not from right what about you know i got family members that may not know who you are mm -hmm. i can do my part to sit there and say hey check these out you know oh you you want this hairstyle antonio do this you know th that's right but that's because i know the type of man i am i don't give a fuck about somebody saying oh because you suggested this or you shared this but oh maybe some going on i don't give a fuck yeah. like i know me i know what i like 
who gives a fuck what you think? Mm-hmm. Why are you even thinking about me in the first place? See, like when, when I when you was like uh, take a picture, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't take a picture with me because people jump into conclusions, start thinking like, oh, you took a picture with every dude I took a picture with. I swear it could have been my cousin, it could have been my brother. Like they think you got something going that's on. That's my man. Or you know, people looking, people that don't know me, looking at it like, oh, that's my big man. Like I get. Men to jump in my inbox. Oh, you been with three niggas this week? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like what? <laughs> How? How you know? I think it's a curiosity thing too. Like maybe you you might wanna be the fourth. Maybe that's your thing. Yeah, because you assuming something that. And where are you getting this from? Because you see a picture. Mm-hmm. Is they naked? Is they in the bedroom? Okay. Like we we put more on it than what it gotta be. Yes. Yes, no, for real. And social media definitely do it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, people be on there doing the most. Like, yeah, because you saw that person doing the messy stuff. Don't think I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Because you went on that person's page, they were doing all that. Don't think I'm doing it. Like, for real. The most I like do on social media is I would never put my personal business out there. I would put different quotes and stuff like that. But as far as personal business, no. I just feel like it's a platform for me. I could have deleted. I would have been deleted Facebook mm-hmm. a long time ago if I wasn't a hairstylist. I wouldn't even have Facebook. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this: Do you think that people are born gay? Yes, you do. I'm one of them. Yeah, feel like you were born gay. Oh yeah, I definitely because I, it's hard to explain, but I feel like that a lot of people that. We are born gay. Like, if you're really gay, for real. Because, like I said, there's people out here that pretend that. Like, they do that for just TV or get paid for it, you know, make money off it. But, yes, I feel like I am. Definitely am. Because I don't, I, I never not looked at a man and say, like, oh, he's cute or he's handsome or in my head, you know what I'm saying? Ever since I was probably like six years old, or I want to even say seven, if I could look at it, somebody and be like, he's cute, or yeah, he's cute. You know, and I still have a girlfriend. I, I remember being in a relationship with a girl, like that's how I know that I was, I remember playing the guy, like I don't want to be gay no more. I don't want to be gay. I don't, God, I don't want to be what I need to be. I don't want to be like this. Like, I remember crying in the room and praying about it, like, Please get this out of me if it's if it's not for me because in the Bible it says if you gay you going to hell and da 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 you know and I definitely read the Bible my mom put us in Bible study every Saturday since we was kids you know so reading the Bible back back and forth back and forth back and forth it's like what I got out of that was God wants me to be myself and He's gonna love me He's gonna judge me not you I don't need nobody else to judge me He will. If I got to deal with that, I'm, let me deal with it. I don't need a, a pastor or a Christian or a Jehovah Witness or anybody to come tell me anything like, oh, you're doing it wrong. Because I feel like we were born in sin anyway. So, yes, I, I, I was born gay, and I feel like a lot of people are. And it's, it's hard to take that away from you. You know, you, you can't take that away from somebody. You can't. You, you can't. I try to take it away from myself. Like I don't want to be with me, and I don't want to. I don't mm. want this. But hey, that's what I like. I can't take that away from me because of other people' opinion. You are right. No, I'm good. So I don't believe that people are born that way. I believe it's a learned behavior. I believe that at those ages of five and six, I think people just want to play, and you know, you you you. You're just being silly and being free. I I just really, it's hard for me to believe that people have it on their mind at that young age. Like, oh no, I know this is always. Now, I do believe that it comes to a point in your life where you make a choice to say, no, I'm rolling with this. But I love these type of conversations because I've never had this conversation with somebody that's gay to say, so you telling me that. You just was born this way. I think a lot of people say certain stuff that's trendy. You yeah. know, you see the Dr. Fields and like it's a clip that like was the mental from thing. That. Even even not not even so much as the mental thing, but um, you know, a guy was basically breaking down on there saying, you know, 
this man is saying that he's a woman, he identifies and he was saying, well, what's a woman? And the guys was just like, you know, I don't really know, but it's kind of like a feeling and, you know, like they had no clue of what it is. And he was saying, no, when a woman dies or a man dies, you dig those bones up. There are certain, you know, characteristics that lets us know. 20 years ago, this person died. There were a woman or a man, you know, the, these body parts and stuff like that. So to say now, oh, I was born this way, like it's more of a learned behavior, in my opinion. But I'm not forcing that down somebody's throat to say, right. like, you a fucking lie. Ain't no way, you know, that's not, you know, my thing. I, right. I personally don't believe that people were born this way. Right. If that's the case, people should get away with saying I was born racist. But that's your opinion. Yeah, just opinion. Yeah, thought provoking. Yeah. You know, make somebody think like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. Roll with it, it. You had me thinking for a second, but nah. I had me you being, thinking though. Yeah, but okay, me being, okay. but me being a a real gay man, like mm-hmm. and authentic myself, like I don't. It, it's 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 real life to me, you know. So it's like it ain't no joke. It ain't it ain't it ain't. It ain't something that I could, I woke up and said, "Hey, I want to be like that." You know what I'm saying? Because when I was a kid, six years old, I wasn't sleeping with nobody. I wasn't sleeping with no man. You know what I'm saying? Even when I was 15, 16, 17, 18, I didn't sleep with no man. Um, it was the feeling in, in 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 my heart. You know what I'm saying? It was just the I I loved a woman first, but I, when I got to loving a man, I loved a man. I loved a man more. You know, so that's what made me like, damn. I would, it was always in the back of my head. I just gave it a try to see if, if that's what I wanted. And then it's like, even to this day, like I said earlier, I could be, I could deal with a woman still. You know, it's just not going to be the way I'm going to deal with a man. Like, I'm going to take my man serious. I'm going to be with him. I'm going to love him. I'm going to nurture him. I'm going to empower him. I can, I can empower a woman in a different way. That's why I do here. So... For you to know and still have a girlfriend at, at one particular point, do you think it was just society telling you that oh, this yeah. is wrong? So that's why you didn't go. That was my it. weak stage. I, that was my weak stage in my life. So of course, yes, um, I was trying to be something that I wasn't, just to make other people satisfied. And then, like I said, when I lost my brothers, it was like, be yourself, do it for you. Mm-hmm. Don't do it for nobody else. Do it for you. And I always took that. And ran with it, and it was like everything that I felt like I was uncomfortable in, make myself comfortable in. But I always wanted to be uncomfortable mm-hmm. because if I'm comfortable in something, it's not right. It's not gonna be right. I'm never comfortable in my in what, where I'm at right now, or even in my sexuality. You know, it's like because you know why I'm not comfortable. Everybody else makes me uncomfortable because I could go in a situation. I'm walking into a man's bathroom. And a man looking at me like, you're not about to be in here. Going to the women's bathroom. I, w- I walk into the women's bathroom, a woman looking at me like, you're not about to be in here. So where do I go? So you don't fit in on either side. Mm-hmm. But I don't give a fuck. I'm just, I'm going to go do what I do. <laughs> I'm still a man. That's who I identify. God made me a man. That's who I am. Mm-hmm. And that's why I always say, like, people that I, it's so much to this, but people that I, trans and um, transgenders and stuff like that. No offense to anybody, but I just feel like nine times out of ten, it comes from a mental place. Mm-hmm. You know, you there's people that look like this and then transform themselves into a woman to look like this just to adapt themselves to society or to the lifestyle, to a lifestyle. And then maybe to a lifestyle that they never would ever thought they would be a part of because they finessing straight men. A lot of transgenders are prostitutes and stuff like that. You know, like being for real, but yeah. And it, it it's sad to say, but but then there's a lot of trans that are amazing people, that are successful, that are doing it in, in TV shows and doing stuff like, 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 making movies and coming out with um, um, music and stuff like that. So it all, it all depends. But, but to me, like I said, I never wanted to be a woman. And 
it all comes from the mental thing. It's where where your head at mentally for people to be in this world. Just like to be a gay man or any type of gay, you have to be prepared and you have to be strong minded because I could have been got a body and go get some titties and do all this, but that's not me. I know that like I I remember being a little kid. I said when I get older, I want to be a girl. I want to be a woman because. In order for me to like a man, I got to be a woman. But then when I, as I grew up from 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, so when I grew up, it was just like, oh, it's okay to like men. It's okay. It's cool. Do you? And I wouldn't want a man to like me because I look like a woman. I want you to like me because of me, period. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of things in, in our lifestyle, it's about sex. It's not monogamy. Monogamy in, in our lifestyle don't exist. It's it's all about sexual intercourse and fantasies and stuff like that. And that goes to straight men too because, well, straight men, because they just like the idea of I just watch the porn and I want to do that with you. And I get so many of them in my inbox saying, yeah, I just want I just want to try it with you because you're the only one out of everybody in this in, in, in time that I want. You're the only one that sparked up my ego or sparked up my fantasy. Oh shit! So I get all of them. I be like, bye. I cut them out. I go crazy on them. Um, but I stopped doing that because it it's it's, it's like. Keep that over there because people are crazy nowadays. People, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, and mean it. I hurt them too, but yeah. So in life, everybody has their ups. They have their downs. When you have your low moments, who do you turn to? God. God. Yes, I'm a I'm a firm believer in that. Um, but if you want to talk about something physical, my mother. You know, um, I go to her, but yeah, but on my, uh, my, you know, a lot of stuff that I I go through, I deal with it. Me, person, mm-hmm. that's what makes me strong. I don't want to p- involve nobody else. And then it's like a lot of people around me that look at me as a strong person. So when they see me weak or hurt or anything like that, they're looking at me like, why you why you acting like that? Why you being like that? Cause you human. And then, yeah, I'm human, but it's like they're not used to that. They don't see that all the time. So when they do get to see my weak side, I get judged. I get talked about, especially like in personal things. Like if I want to talk about my relationship, like I I could be hurt because of my relationship and I come and tell you and vent to you and you run off and go tell everybody else. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's just... It's just and, or just me being hurt, period, like, in life, like, with my business or stuff like that. I mean, I'm going to come tell you something, and it's like, you go tell somebody else and talk about me. Nah, this is why I don't talk, uh, this is why I don't tell nobody nothing. I'd rather go sit up here and tell a stranger something because I know when that stranger leaves my house, it's not going to be said to my personal people. It's not going to be, oh, yeah, did you hear what Antonio said about this and this and that? Oh, yeah, Antonio going through this and that, that, that. Like, oh, did you see what Antonio did on social media? Like, no, no. That's I do what? want you to find an outlet um, because I feel like this. I don't have to agree with everything that you do or say. You don't have to agree with everything I say or I do. But you human at the end of the day. We all have our struggles. We all have things that we deal with. And holding it in has never been good for anybody. Oh, yeah. So I definitely would encourage you to, you know, talk to somebody, you know, when you have those moments. Not to say you just always battling this. But, oh, yeah. you know, we all have those moments. So whether it's, you know, a little therapy, a life coach, any of that kind of stuff. A okay. homegirl got a rage room. You know, you got to get some of that off okay. your chest. Like, don't hold it in. You know, you know it's crazy. I've been wanting to, I, um, like, not on no weak stuff or nothing, but just to get, um, talk to a therapist, just to get their understanding of me. You know, like, just to see, like, if I got something that I need to work on. You know? Why not? It is healthy. It might as well. It is. You know, so... Yeah, definitely. I'm all for therapy. That's what this podcast is for me. That's why I 
well, it ain't why I started it, but it became therapy for me. Having yeah. these conversations, I'm a big conversation person. I love to go back and forth. You know, I want to see what you think, your thoughts, ideas, you know, your perspective, all of this. Like, give it to me. Mm-hmm. I give you mine, and, you know, hopefully we I make got a question. Magic. Go ahead, give it to me. Okay, so we're talking about this. So if a gay man was to tell you you was handsome, how would you take that? Oh, shit. If a gay man told me I was handsome. I'd well, like, hey, you cute. I'd probably give him the acknowledgement, like, okay, but then, you know, for me, like, let that be that. Yeah. Once you go beyond that, now you finna piss me off. Being disrespectful. You finna piss me off. And then, you know, wherever it goes from there, but I don't just be like, motherfucker, you better, you know, that's it to me, but (laughs) once you see, like, okay, I acknowledge, I appreciate that you said that, but I don't swing that way, just respect my boundaries to say, like, I acknowledge you, I ain't jump off the... Off the deep end saying, oh, I whoop you and you this and you a fag. You, I, I didn't do yeah. all that. Like, so, no, nah, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't rattle me or anything right. like that. Because, again, I'm secure with myself as a man. That's what you, you know, need prime to- example, I got you on the show. I guarantee when this episode comes out, <laughs> nobody would expect me to reach out to you or have you on the show. Right. And now, if anything, people probably would have expected, oh, it's a group setting. This is a one-on-one. Yeah. Nobody else. Yeah. It's just us. So, nah, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't get offended. Yeah. But I had never thought about that until you, you know. Right. Not because, you know, we're talking about this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's why I was saying, like, because you, like, people ain't born gay, like, but people are born gay. I mean, they may be. You know, again, <laughs> it's something that I won't understand. And that's why I like this conversation. Yeah. Because, again, I don't know what it's like to be like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I know what I know. You know what you know. Yeah. And then there there may be more people willing to come out and have this conversation, oh, you yeah. know. And, and it may be something that I do need to look into, get more educated with what you gave me. Take that. Look some stuff up. Talk to some more people and get an understanding. Because, yeah. I, I again, that's the only way a lot of these narratives will change and end. Mm-hmm. If we start to hear each other out, you know, but the same way I give you the opportunity to express yourself, I should be able to have the opportunity to express myself. So, oh, yeah. you know, even if it ends in a let's agree to disagree on that situation, that's fine. But I heard you out. You heard me. You know where I come from. Mm-hmm. I know where you come from. We don't do that anymore. It's just a man. Fuck what you talking about. Oh, yeah. God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And, I'm you know, sick all of that. Of that type of I'm so <laughs> sick of that. People need to stop talking about that because a lot of y'all that saying that ain't even reading the Bible right. Like, for real, like, a lot of people that are doing this are out there raping women or out there raping men. Like, a lot of people are doing more shit than to worry about somebody that sex, somebody's sexuality, period. Like, go focus on something else, please. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of stuff in the Bible, um, half of them people that was in there is rapists and... Um, um, don't talk about that King James, man. Now. Don't talk about that King James. Now people get upset when you talk about that Bible. They don't want to hear no, that. Oh yeah, they don't come for me, y'all. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Nah, but for real though, like if if that's the case, then yeah, let's talk about it. But I just, you know, it's a it's a lot to it. You know, it, it's it's a lot to understand. People don't understand. It's, it's a lot to that. I don't understand with straight people. So it's it's it's. it's why what you want to hunt curves and you know all nah, that beauty guy man no nah, if i would you know me being me still being a man i want my woman to have all that yeah. beautiful body beautiful face um yeah so yeah i don't I, hey what floats your boat what floats yeah. your boat what floats mine let it be mine that, that's right that's okay. right let it be yours I'm and, with and, that. It, and it's a respect level too because a lot of gay people do disrespect straight men mm-hmm. and they they do the most or um, trying to get men to like them and stuff like that. Like, no. But means. it's the same with straight men, too, because if I see you walking, I, I don't have to say shit. Mm-hmm. Even if I don't agree with what I see, I could say, oh, man, you know, the nails, the hair, the, oh, man, it, I don't have to say anything. Right. But a lot of times we trying to impress somebody we with. Fucking fag or you this. What yeah. you saying all that for? Yeah. Like, you know, it... It, it makes you, you wonder, hug? are you re- exactly, you are hug, you really baby? interested? Because <laughs> for you to have so much animosity pent up and feel the need to say something, I could disagree with everything you done said on this podcast. That don't mean I got to attack you. Yeah. Like, I don't even have to say a word to you. Mm-hmm. That That's the part that people get messed up. So. No, yeah, definitely. Because it, it's a lot, a lot of those. It's a lot of those. 
mm-hmm. for real. And then it's a lot of those that doing the judgmental thing the whole time over the down low at, undercover at the bro. brother house doing the damn thing with your with your people, mm-hmm. with your bros. You chilling with your bros and stuff like that. Most definitely. That's why I don't trust nobody. This is the part of the show where I like to turn it over to you. If there's any shout outs you want to do, if you got any more you want to add to the to the topic, uh, if you want to switch it up a little bit, that's perfectly fine. This is your time to shine and do as you please. Okay. Um, you know, I'm I'm definitely a hairstylist, so you know, you can follow me on all platforms of my social media: Facebook, Antonio De La Cruz, Instagram, A Styles ninety two. Uh, Snapchat, real many DLC. Um, you know, I, I, all my work is on there. I do phenomenal hairstyles. I, I worked with a lot of people over the years. So, like when, when, what I wanted to talk about is, I get a lot of people in my inbox saying, I want you to teach me how to do this, or I love your work, or. The plot, the, what you're doing is amazing. I, can you teach me? And I, it's like a lot of people don't want to help uh, support other people, and I'm willing to do all of that, you know. And, and I so su- I'm supporting so many people right now, and you know I'm gonna do a class in in June, uh, this year. So I want to help people dedicate themselves to their craft because nobody helped me. All my work come from YouTube <laughs> or seeing somebody else doing it. I'm like. Oh my God, Eric and Tate just did that. I could do that, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's a hairstylist. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, but it, it, it's just that that's what I'm into and to help young women and young men that get in my inbox and be like, yo, your, your, your job, what you do is amazing. I can't believe you do that. Like, that's crazy. Or there's people that been rocking with me for the past eight years and was like, dang, like, you came this far, like, I remember doing hair at, for fifty dollars. Now I'm charging two, three hundred dollars up. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, it, it's crazy. If I could do it, anybody could do it. You know, and uh, I, I just it, whatever you put your mind to, do it. You know, and being an entrepreneur, it's definitely hard because, especially if you don't have a team. Mm-hmm. I'm working on a team right now, so it's because I didn't believe in myself. In a lot of areas. And, you know, I knew that I was talented. I just didn't know how big I could go with it. I could take this up completely. And so just me being me and getting myself together is, is the most humbling thing to do right now. You know what I'm saying? My business-wise is popping. We're going to get it popping. Absolutely. And I'm I'm definitely supportive to everybody. That's why I appreciate you putting me a part of this platform because I'm going to get my clients and people to watch this. And then I people are just going to go through your page. And it's it's it's, it's amazing. You know, just work together. You know, I, I appreciate that you're, you're open-minded. Because not a lot of people are open-minded at all, period. So, and, and that's a good thing. That's why I was, like, I was so nervous to be a part of this. But at the same time, it's like, somebody got to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Somebody got to break definitely the ice, do. you know. Definitely do. And it's it more to talk about. Most definitely. We got some of that <laughs> in the works already. Yeah. Got some of that in the works. So I want to ask you this. Um, I know we closing it out, but I did want to ask this before we leave this situation. What would the Antonio now say to the Antonio then before you came out? What What advice would you give yourself back then? Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. And, and and just do what you need to do. Don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Don't think about the next person. Think about you. Think about your future. Think about what you want. Don't think about what everybody else is saying because that's where we get messed up at. We worried about what other people got to say. No. Because once you do it, it don't matter if you're doing good or bad. People still going to talk about you. So just do you. Just do it for you. And that's what I would say to the old Antonio. That's what's up. Yes. Hope y'all like this episode. For those that want to support, you can cash out Thought Provoking 88. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thought Provoking Podcast.